Apple Lock is the biggest leap ever in the filmmaking with the iPhone. And even right now, guys, I'm filming with the Apple Lock with my iPhone 15 Pro Max. Everything you need to know to get started with Apple Lock in one video. Let's go! So what is Apple Lock and why it's miles ahead of the standard camera app and the standard footage of the iPhone? Apple Log is a flat picture profile that contains a lot of data in the darkest and the brightest parts of the image and gives you a lot of advantages compared to a standard camera. For example, this is how it looks with a standard camera app without doing anything to the footage. Remember guys that Apple Log is only available with the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max as for now. So what are the advantages of the Apple Log? It decreases gross over sharpening effect which adds contrast to the edges of objects and makes everything look plastic and unreal. Realistic. It turns off irritating tone mapping, which adjusts the exposure in different parts of the image, like skin or sky, even if you don't want it to make such adjustments. The standard video recording with the iPhone always makes your face look flat. Also, Apple Lock reduces noise reduction artifacts that makes the image look soft and blurry. Also, Apple Lock gives you much more room in post for color grading. And you can work with Apple Lock within standard dynamic range timeline, also known as the SDR or Rec. 709, or the HDR timeline like Rec. 2020 or HLG. Right now, guys, you're watching the real-world examples of using the Apple Lock. And to be honest, guys, I stopped bringing the camera and lenses to my trips. So here you can see the footage from Dubai and from Sri Lanka. And all of the shots are made with the iPhone 15 Pro Max in Apple Lock only. I also made a low-light cinematic video with the iPhone 15 Pro Max and Apple Log, and as you can tell, guys, it looks amazing. And even Apple themselves shot the entire presentation of the new MacBooks with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, of course, in Apple Log. There are two main ways of using the Apple Log with your iPhone. You can shoot either in the standard camera app and enable Apple Log in the settings, or you can use a third-party app like I'm using right now. This is the free app called Blackmagic Cam. Or you can pick another third-party app, but I do enjoy using the Blackmagic Camera app for sure. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of both methods? First, if you film with the regular standard camera app and you enable Apple Log, you are limited to 4K 30p and you need to plug in an external SSD drive to unleash the 4K 60p. Also, it only records in 4K 422HQ ProRes codec and you'll have pretty limited time to record. But on the plus side, you'll have all the best stabilization quality of the iPhone because in third-party apps, the stabilization is not that great. And also, you'll be able to use the action mode to crop in a little bit to stabilize the footage even more and to get great results even if you use the 5x camera of your iPhone. Another drawback of the standard camera app is it doesn't have lots or lookup tables or let me say presets that can display the graded or the colorful and contrasty and saturated image. You can only look at the flat log profile and it's a bit hard to expose looking at this flat image and hard to tell if your white balance is correct. And you cannot the white balance properly, you don't have minor adjustments for your shutter speed, ISO and all that, so it's a pretty basic app. So in my case, I would prefer using the Blackmagic camera app, which is free once again, to film in Apple Log, because it gives me a lot of options in terms of codecs, so I can film in ProRes with bigger file sizes, I can pick ProRes LT with smaller file sizes, but still great image quality, and on top of that, I can film in H.265 highly compressed codec, which allows me to store a ton of data, like 12 hours of 4K footage with my 512GB iPhone 15 Pro Max. And the image quality is not that much lower than in the ProRes and ProRes LT options. Of course, Blackmagic Camera app also allows you to dial in the settings like white balance, ISO, shutter speed, etc. I'm sure, guys, you already know about different settings. If you don't, there is a ton of videos on this channel, so you can check those out. Also, this app allows you to preview the image with the LUT applied. LUT is a preset, kind of a you know, Instagram filter, if you will, and you can monitor the image with high contrast, great saturation, the colors that you will get after applying the same LUT or a preset afterwards in post. You can even bake the slot into the footage and will not have to color grade it in post. And guys, you'll have something like exposure assist features, focus assist features, and more. I'm sure, guys, that you're not filming in Apple Log yet because you heard a lot of myths about huge file sizes, but it's not true. If you use Blackmagic Camera app, especially in H.265 codec, you will save a ton of storage. So, for example, I shot all the cinematic video from my vacations from Sri Lanka and the whole footage for about two and a half hours was around 60 gigs. 
not a lot. But if you are using the main camera app and you film an Apple log in progress, it will get pretty big, of course. And now, guys, I'm back to filming with my mirrorless camera. Now let's have a look at the Blackmagic camera app and the best practices of filming in Apple Log. So as you can see, guys, we can pick any lens like ultra wide, the 1x lens, the 2x lens, which is hidden right here underneath the loop. You can pick the 2x right here or you can use the 5x telephoto lens. But my suggestion is to use the 1x as fast and as often as possible, not fast, just as often as possible, because it will provide you with the best quality image. It has the biggest sensor and the least amount of noise. So if you can use the 1x at all times and you know zoom in with your feet or zoom out with your feet, use the 1x camera. So right here you have your frames per second. Make sure that you set the proper frames per second uh, depending on the country you're in. And also if you want to film in slow motion like I do a lot, you can choose the 50 frames per second if you live in PAL region or the 60 frames per second if you live in NTSC region like United States. Also, the shutter is really important. Try to keep the shutter doubled to your frame rate. So if you shoot in 50 frames per second, pick the 100, uh, 1 over 100th of a shutter. And if you film in 25 frames per second, pick 1 over 50th. If it's too bright, you can lower the ISO value. But if it's already on the lowest setting, you need an ND filter. And the ND filter is kind of sunglasses for your camera, or in this case, your smartphone, and it reduces the exposure. And guys, do you see this little locking sign? Yes, you do need to lock the exposure, not to have weird changes of exposure throughout the shot. The same applies to white balance. You can lock the white balance to keep it in one position so it doesn't go like all the way to the warm side, to the cool side. No, we need the fixed white balance and exposure for the best shots. And in terms of stabilization, in Blackmagic Camera app, you have four different settings. Off, which is completely off, like 100% off, do not use this one. The standard, which crops in a little bit, but also gives you quite enough of stabilization. And then the cinematic and the extreme. But with the cinematic and the extreme, when you hit record, it will kind of go much slower. So you turn the phone and then it goes back to you when you are using the LUT. So let's go here, the LUT or a preset or a preview. If we turn it off, it works normally and fine even in the extreme stabilization mode. But if you are applying the LUT or baking in the LUT, which is important because I think some of you will want to bake in the look into the file itself, you will have this little lag if you are using the extreme and cinematic stabilization. So let's turn the LUT on. And speaking of LUTs or presets, Apple has their own LUT, Apple Log to Rack 709, and I do have my own favorite, which is Alistair Chapman's LUT, and I'll leave this down below the like button. If you want to download it, it's completely free. But also, guys, you can use whatever LUT you prefer, just play around with those and find the best that works for you. And I think a lot of you guys heard the myth that the log filmmaking is not for low light situations, but as I showed you before, in this night cinematic sequence, I shot a a ton of footage with ISO up to 2000 and it's not looking horrible. It actually looks great in my opinion. So don't be afraid to use your camera in Apple Log during lower lighting conditions. It will be at least better than with the standard camera app without using the log for sure. But guys, how do I edit the Apple Log footage straight on my iPhone? There are a couple of ways. So the first one is the simple editing in the Photos app, the standard app. We go to edit and we see a clip from Sri Lanka, beautiful palm trees, but it's an Apple log. So let's go to edit, we hit adjust, and we go to this tab, which is called contrast, and we simply hit 100 on contrast, contrast, and also to the saturation tab, we hit the saturation to about 80 degrees, we can add a little bit of vibrancy, we can change the warmth a tiny bit, like so, and the tint, it's a bit too green in my opinion, so let's add a little bit of magenta right here. And probably this would be this would be pretty fine. Maybe a little bit with black levels, a little bit with brightness. So something like this works pretty fine. We can hit done, and then we go to this three dots, and we can say copy edits, and we can paste this edit to any clip or a number of clips. We said paste edits. And there you go, it's already pre-graded with the same settings, which is nice. But those settings do not really fit to this video, so let's color grade it in a different program. But what if you want to use a lot on your smartphone, but you cannot do this in the standard Photos app? You can use something else like VN app, it's a free app, 
and you have 100 projects as a free option. So let's hit the new project. So here we have the project and we want to add the lot. My favorite one. We go to filters, you can add your own lot, but I have already added my favorite, so we hit this one and it is already applied. We hit done. So this is the image we're going to work with. We still go to filters, we go to adjust, and now let's adjust the exposure. So we'll need to raise the exposure a little bit. It depends on the shot that I'm using. So every shot will be a little bit different. So we'll add a little bit of contrast as well, maybe some brightness, not really, some saturation as well, a little bit of vibrance. The temperature could be a tiny bit warmer, let me say. And as you can tell guys her skin is a little too warm so we can go to hsl and pick the red hue or the pink hue and we can desaturate those hues just a tiny bit so let's hit saturation and go a tiny bit less right here and with the pink hue as well so here we are guys this is the after and here is the before after before straight on your phone and then you can save this file and use it in a further sequences or simply edit in here and right now guys i have my computer right here so what if you want to edit your images in post with your macbook or a different computer you can use any editing software in my case this is final cut pro and i've been working in this particular program for like 13 years but you can pick any and you'll have more or less the same tools. So let's have a look at a couple of shots from Sri Lanka as well. So right here we have this beautiful lighthouse and here's how it looks after grading. I'll show you how we color graded this one. And this is the log image from the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And here is myself and I'm standing in a beautiful spot also on Sri Lanka. And here is the graded image. And as you can tell, guys, we have all the highlights and the shadows saved in this clip. And after color grading, we still retain the details, even in the highest highlights and the lowest shadows, let me say. So how do we edit those uh, images? First of all, because we did apply the LUT while I was filming, I do know that this lot will be really nice with this footage. So you go and you apply your lot. In this case, we go to the effects tab, we drag the custom lot button and we pick our lot. In this case, this is this one. And we get this kind of image. And at the first glance, it's not the best image in the world, but we'll need to add a little bit of adjustments. So we hit command six in Final Cut and, or we simply go to this color grading tab and we'll add the color wheels functionality. And now let's raise up the highlights. So only the highest parts, the brightest parts of the image are being applied, are being worked with. And also now let's apply a little more. And then let's drag the midtones down. And here we go. So let's hit before and after. So yeah, you can see that it is now much better, much brighter, much more vibrant. We can add just a tiny bit of saturation right here. And uh, I do see some green tint on the lighthouse itself. So we can add the tint towards magenta, like two points would be fine. And it's more or less the same color grade. It's that fast and simple. One lot and one nod and one layer of color correcting tools like the color wheels or color board whatever is more suitable for you and this is that simple now let's have a look at my face so let's one more uh, apply one more lot and now let's get to this one so as you can see it's already pretty fine but i want to boost those highlights a little bit more so we'll add another color wheels nod and now let's raise the exposure and I'm looking at this part of the image to the sky so it's not blown out, not overexposed and to this RGB or to Luma waveform. So here we have the highlights, let's pull it a little bit more and now let's lower the shadows just a tiny bit and lower the midtones just a tiny bit as well. So this looks pretty fine but if we zoom into my face like 400% you can see that my lips and overall my skin looks a bit too red-ish. Now let's apply the hue saturation curves and I want to desaturate my skin, the red channel. And now let's pick the color picker, pick my lips and we'll desaturate this part just a tiny bit so it doesn't look like I have lipstick on my lips. So here is the before and after. And as you can see, guys, it's now a bit more natural. So the Apple Log does tend to have too much information in the 
red channel so that is why it's important to lower the red channel exposure and saturation just a tiny bit so it's not as pinkish so what if we apply the apple log lot which is right here as you can tell guys let's turn off the color wheels it's much more flat and it's a lot more pinkish that is why I don't use this slot and uh, it's a bit harder for me to color grade this slot. And also keep in mind that your input and your output has to be um, correct. So if you work in the HDR timeline, you need to change those um, appropriately. So right here, let's go back to my lot and turn the corrections on and get back to the image. So here is the before and here is the before and here is the after guys. As you can tell, it's not that complicated and anybody can use Apple Lock to get this amazing results from their iPhones. To conclude guys, Apple Lock unleashes the potential of your iPhone, giving you much more realistic image that's coming closer to professional cinema cameras like I use right here. This is the Sony FX30 and I did compare those two cameras side by side and in good lighting conditions and especially with the One X camera, the iPhone is not that far from a mirrorless camera. And to be honest guys, Apple Lock is not that hard to use as you saw, but the results will be truly remarkable. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them down below. And if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button. See you in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye.